In the last videos, we saw how to add custom entrance animations and hover animations to Elementor. Today, we're going to be doing the uh, the same exercise for the uh, pop up entrance and the uh, exit animations. Uh, the setup is going to be relatively the same, uh, so I am not going to be explaining much of it. Uh, I suggest for those that, if you haven't seen the other tutorials, it's probably a good idea to look at that first uh, before you jump into this one. Uh, so let's get started. Um, let's see. So first things first, so again, we need to use the PHP filters available to us. Uh, in this case, again, I'm going to use the uh, woody snippets, uh, but you can, of course, use whatever uh, workflow works best for you. Uh, so I'm going to call this snippet pop-up animations PHP. And the, it's basically the same thing. This filter for the entrance animation, uh, we already used it before. Uh, and then there is another one that is just for the exit animation. And in each one we have a callback, which is a function, and in this case the function returns an array uh, with a group that is called uh, my pop-up animations. And the animations itself, in this case circle reveal and circle hide for the exit one. Alright, so we are going to execute it everywhere and publish. So at this point uh, here we have a pop-up uh, with a menu. If we refresh we should see the entrance animations that we just added, the declarations. Uh, if we go to the settings and then entrance animation all the way at the bottom uh, we see the entrance that we just added, so circle reveal, and in the exit we should have circle hide. So I'm going to give the animation a duration of 2 seconds and just set it up. So the next part is the actual CSS animation. And again, same thing, we're going to just create a snippet, we're going to copy the code that we have and paste it in there, and then we're going to insert the CSS code in the footer. So, let's see, CSS snippet, and then, uh, whatever. So the animation, uh, in this case we're using Clippad, because uh, I think Clippad, they're really good for reveal type of animations with uh, a modal, a pop-up, or uh, off-canvas uh, type of uh, modules. Uh, but it can, of course, be whatever you want it to be, just like for uh, the hover and the entrance, the standard entrance animations, uh, the animation itself, it can be anything really. Uh, so we are going to insert it in the footer and publish. So if we go to a page, uh, no and we view the page. So we have the standard page with a few widget and the menu here uh, that is connected, uh, it's an icon that's connected to the, uh, the pop-up that we saw before. And if we click, we have a nice smooth reveal, circle reveal animation from the center of the screen. And when we close, it just runs the same type of animation with a, uh, a in reverse mode, basically. So that's basically all there is to it, really. Uh, if we look at the article, um, just if you want to play and do, you know, um, these clip bat based animations, uh, which again they're really good for pop ups, I think. Um, if we changed line. 9 and 10. Uh, right now we have the circle 
uh, that is with the radius basically a size of 0% without any coordinates. So that means it starts at the center of the screen like you saw. The reveal effect starts from the center, uh, which means that if we change the coordinates of the clip pad anywhere, then the reveal will start from there. So one common uh, animation is for menus is where it starts from the right top corner and expands all the way to the bottom uh, left uh, bottom left corner and to do that it's really easy uh, we just need to give it a coordinate of top right corner so in this case uh, you just do at 100 on the x-axis so top left corner is 0, 0, 0 on the X, 0 on the Y, and then top right is 100 on the X and uh, 0 on the Y axis. So if we update this, then we should have that circle, that circle type of shape that starts from here and expands all the way to the bottom. There you go as simple as that and clickpad is really it's really good uh, even with just CSS uh, property it's really good and it's even more powerful if you use um, if you use a clickpad within a, an SVG for example uh, you can add several shapes and then animate those shapes at the same time or um, orchestrate the animation of all those different shapes and um, even with just the property uh, we can create a circle we can create an ellipse we can create an inset which is basically a rectangle uh, or you know uh, a box uh, it can be basically any type of rectangular shape uh, or a polygon uh, which is really powerful because we can define a bunch of nodes and then give it all type of shapes that we want. And the good thing about this is that we can animate the different uh, sets. So for this, I'm using this clipbed generator uh, in Uplabs, but there is Clippy. There are a bunch of others. Uh, if you Google it, you'll get uh, several ones. But this is good enough for me. Uh, you can also use uh, any vector type application uh, that allows you to generate the code or export the code or copy the code. <sighs> Sorry, I needed to drink there. <coughs> right, what was I saying? Yeah, I mean, the important thing is to grab the, the, the polygon pad. So you can use Illustrator or whatever, or just this is good enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to create our own uh, type of animation uh, using uh, polygon shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few nodes. Uh, I'm going to add four nodes, I think. Uh, I want to be able to see first. Uh, let's see, and uh, another, okay, all right, so let's put these here and these two here. So at the start of animation, I want these polygons, uh, these uh, four vectors to be basically placed two at the top, two at the bottom and I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna go back to the CSS code and at 0% I'm going to paste that piece of code uh, that we got and then at, uh, let's see uh, at 50% I want to show half of it as a triangle so just move the node and then copy and paste uh, 
and then at a hundred percent of the animation I want to show the whole thing so just move the node and then copy the code there and just paste it so unless I made a mistake somewhere uh, if I refresh the page we're gonna see basically the same thing it's first gonna animate this way uh, so it's gonna go from here goes here and then from the bottom to here so let's see up and up and then in reverse when we close so it's like a swipe in motion or no windshield or something whatever uh, so that's how easy it is and you can do all type of things uh, if you're you know it's uh, you can go crazy and do nice or you know do some very ugly stupid stuff let's add a few more nods um, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to do with this. I'm not sure I do. Uh, yeah, a hexagon or something. Uh, I want it to be like without any form really there's just uh, an ugly polygon -ish type of shape um, just exaggerating things here but uh, let's see uh, so first uh, I should have copied that 50 oh, that's okay uh, so at first I want everything to start at the center so just gonna give everything all the vectors 50 on both axes axes what do you say so uh, 15 15 oh no I really should have copied that anyway 50 50 and this one two So uh, let's say 20%. We wanted to have this shape, whatever this is. And then uh, I'm going to change it again. So something like this, I guess. Why not? I'm just playing around, obviously, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, so at 50% we want to have the new shape that we just did and uh, add, uh, add another maybe 75% or something 75% we want it to go this way I could have added some more nods, but uh, too late. Doesn't matter. Uh, right, so let's say 70%. We want to have this shape here. And at 100%, we wanted to just basically cover the whole thing. So this way, this way, and this way. This is pretty probably gonna be ugly, but uh, it's not really important. Uh, the point is, you can create all type of polygon-based uh, shape animations this way, in the same fashion. So you just create a shape. Uh, you insert a number of nodes uh, or vectors that you want to work with and at each step you change it 
in a certain way and copy the code and then uh, just create another keyframe for it uh, and so if we go and refresh this one we should have something I don't know what we're gonna have but uh, yeah why not Oh, very cool. Alright. And yeah, of course, so uh, you can do in the same fashion whatever you want. And that's pretty much uh, all there is to it. Now, if we take like the um, original example that we had uh, for. Uh, say the the circle uh, if we want to keep working with the uh, with the uh, same primitives and say at six at zero percent we want it to be at the top right corner and then um, let's see at, uh, let's say uh, 40 percent uh, we want or maybe 35 percent we want it to be at um, five percent so remember when we don't give a position that means the center uh, it will be at 50 50 basically uh, right so here what we're saying basically is that starts at the top right corner and then um, the 30 percent uh, be at the center uh, with a five percent radius which means that basically at the top right corner it will travel and grow little by little up to five percent once it gets to the center it will start expanding uh, just like it did before so if we go and look at this now uh, did I refresh? No. Uh, so if I refresh now, we have that circle, it travels to the center, and then it starts growing. Alright, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did, please press that like button and uh, let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if I'm doing anything wrong. Uh, it'd be nice to have feedback on these uh, tutorials if you like them or not uh, if you're interested you can subscribe to the channel so that you're notified when I upload the new uh, tutorial thanks